everybody. I really welcome and thank you for the opportunity to come and introduce myself and tell you a little bit about who I am and why I'm running for the United States Senate. The first thing that you should know about me is that, uh, based on the television ads, I'm the proud son of immigrants. And somebody commented about my dad in a TV ad who we convinced to come and talk about me. And it was really a pleasure to do. You know, my mom and dad came to, from uh, Scotland to America in the early 60s when I was a little boy. And by any measure, they've had a tough life. My dad has been a janitor. My mom worked nights, and she was a maid. My dad was severely handicapped in an industrial accident. You don't know that. You can't see that in the ad. We spent a lot of time making sure that he wasn't embarrassed by that. He was very kind to do it for me. But they've had a tough life, and they taught me one thing, though, and I want to remember that, and I want to share it with you. They taught me that America is the best place on earth and that we're lucky to live here. That spirit, that ideal that they taught me is why I'm running for the United States Senate. I think of myself as a businessman. I really do. I've been at it 30 years. And when I look at something, I think, can I make it better? When I look at a piece of equipment, I think, how does it work? And how do we make it work? I've created lots of jobs. And I think that jobs and the lack of economic <coughs> growth is the single biggest problem <coughs> we have in America today. It's what pays for our lifestyle, our military, and supports who we are and what we are. And right now, our economy, our way of life is threatened by what's going on in Washington. Do me a favor if you don't mind. Raise your hand if you, like me, are worried about the direction of Washington. Raise your hand. A partisan bill. I've been doing that all around this state, independents and Democrats. And you know what? It's almost every time it's unanimous. It's not just us. It's not just partisans. It isn't. It's all of us. We are worried about our country. We all have friends and loved ones who have lost a job. We have children graduating from high school and college, and they can't find work, and they've got to leave the state. I see it over and over again. The single reason that motivated me to run for office is our company ran an ad in June. Excuse me, July. We would normally get 20 applicants for this particular job. It was an assistant office manager's position. Mm -hmm. We got 350 applications in the first 72 hours, everybody. Wow. We had a pile of, ad, of, of ads and that, that went from here to the window in my office. And what was really profound is when you pick up that piece of paper or open an envelope, these were not young people leaving college. These were men and women at the economic height of their life. They were fully involved in their life. They were 20 and 30 years. They had masters. They had JDs. They had PhDs. It was unbelievable. Shortly thereafter, I went to hear the speakers of who was going to be involved in our government. And I came home that night, and I said to my wife, I'm going to run for office. I'm going to go make a difference. You know, I don't know if I'm going to win this race, everybody. But I promise you, I've never felt so profoundly called to service as I am right now. My background of building jobs, my background of being a common sense business person, I believe is needed now more than ever. People in Washington don't know what they're doing. They haven't a clue, haven't <coughs> a clue how to create a job, what it takes. They don't know what it takes to buy a piece of equipment, build a manufacturing building, put it on the ground, hire people and train them to make that machine work to make a quality product, to price it correctly, to compete against the Chinese and the Japanese and the Europeans effectively. It's really hard. And you do it one at a time. Their idea of an economic turnaround is to pave every interstate a quarter of inch of tar from here to California and say, job done. That's just bankrupting us. Now, a lot of people will talk about what's wrong with America. But for a minute, I want to talk about what's right for America and go back to my parents. The optimism that brought my parents to this country, the optimism that my parents said to me, even though they had a tough life, that this is the land of opportunity, those ideals, you know, the best thing about our country, it isn't money, it isn't assets, it's feelings in our heart and ideas in our head that give us clarity of purpose. It's ideals like opportunity for all, freedom, the ability and the willingness to work hard for the betterment of ourselves and our family. 
That's what America is. And that feeling that we are Americans and that we can overcome and that we can win, that's what it means to be an American. And we need to remember it now more than ever. If we remember that simple fact that we will win, we will succeed. People in Washington don't get it. You know, they think, and the tragedy is, that their spending, this reckless, incredible spending, will solve the problems we're in. And you know the tragedy of the spending? It's not the spending. It's what they're spending it on just doesn't work. Let me give you some very simple facts. They're really simple. And I call it the 3 two, one rule. Three trillion dollars is what they're spending. Two trillion dollars is what they're taking in. One trillion dollars is our deficit now, this year. A little more than that, actually. 1.2. But three, two, I call it the 3 two, one rule. Now, if, if dollars were seconds, one million dollars is 12 days. Okay? Million seconds, a million dollars, 12 days. A billion dollars is 30 years. A trillion dollars, ladies and gentlemen, is back to remembered history. It's three and a half thousand years. That's how much money these people are spending. That's the scale of what they're doing to us. It's enormous. <clears throat> it is unsustainable. Now, America has got three great stools going for it. Its foundations are three things, in my opinion. The first is immigrants. I don't know about the rest of you, but my family was poor. That's how I got here. Most rich people stayed back wherever they were. People who came here to America, they were poor. Okay, And I'm proud of it. You know, when I was going to run for office, my mom said to me, son, I said, she said to me, son, they're going to know we were poor and I'll be embarrassed. And I said, Mom, I'm so proud of you. And I promise you, they're going to give me grief for being rich. <laughs> I'm going to remember that joke, too. <laughs> but the point is that America has got three great things going for it. The first is people. People who want opportunity. People who want a shot and want a chance. Okay? The second is the Bill of Rights. God bless the Bill of Rights. That's why Argentina never got it. Okay? We got it. We got the Bill of Rights. Thank you, Thomas Jefferson. And the third is capital. Yes, money, capital. Wall Street. This populist argument that we have against these people in New York who have lost sight of what they're supposed to be doing. Okay? But the reason an American farmer with a $200,000 combine can outwork 25,000 Chinese immigrants is because he's got the capital to buy that equipment. Okay? The combination of those three things, people who want to work, economic opportunity, capital, and the Bill of Rights and the freedoms to go to work, is what America is great for. We need to remember that equation. And that results in smaller, more effective government and pushing decisions down. What they're doing in Washington is crazy. We don't need bridges to nowhere. Okay? We don't need to pay money to foreign countries so they'll like us and we call it foreign aid. That's ridiculous. Okay? You know how incensed I was as a business person when we put $20 billion into Chrysler and then we turn around and say, here, for a dollar, you can have it to the Italians? That isn't bad business. That's stupid. <laughs> right? Those are the reasons that I'm running, is to stop that. There are things that we need here in New Hampshire that we can do. The first, did you know that we're one of the very few states in the Union that doesn't have a VA hospital, a major VA hospital? I know how difficult it is to have someone fitted with a prosthesis. I've seen it. I know how tough it is. I spent my, my youth going with my dad to do that sort of stuff. It's terrible. We need one of those right here. That's a disgrace that we don't have. And if I'm the United States Senator, I promise you, I will work to get a major VA hospital in Concord or Manchester. Not a clinic. Yeah. Our men and women deserve better than a clinic. They deserve a hospital. Second, don't worry, I have a good soon. I like it. <laughs> 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 